Hello guys and welcome back to another important video on technical interview and today we are back with another important question on binary tree and that is finding the left hand side and the right hand side view of a binary tree. So as promised in this video tutorial series on binary tree I will be trying to cover as many as questions on binary tree as possible which are most commonly asked in any product based company. And similarly over here today we will be solving another important question and that is the left hand side and the right hand side view of a binary tree. So before solving this problem let's first understand that what this problem statement actually tells. So the problem statement is very straightforward and easy to understand. So here it tells that for a given binary tree over here we have to find out the left hand side or the right hand side view of the tree. Which means that if I try to view this binary tree from here which is the left hand side of the binary tree so the output will be something like 1, 2, 4 and 7 which means that if I try to see from the left hand side of the binary tree you can see that this node is visible from the left hand side similarly this 2 is visible, 4 is visible as well as this 7 is visible from the left hand side and that is why 1, 2, 4 and 7 will be the left hand side view of our binary tree. And similarly for the right hand side view of the binary tree we have to place our point of reference over here that is on the right hand side of our binary tree. And if I try to get the node from this right hand side point of reference the right hand side view will be 1, 3, 6 and 7 which means this will be the right hand side view of the binary tree. So let me print out over here so it will be 1, 3, 6 and 7. So this is actually the problem statement. So the interviewer will be asking you that given a binary tree you have to print out the left hand side or the right hand side view of that tree. So it might look quite difficult to figure it out that which is the left hand side or the right hand side of our binary tree and how we will be printing it efficiently but frankly telling that this is a very easy solution to implement. If you just understand the level order traversing of a binary tree. And in our previous video we have explained the level order traversal in great detail. So if you have missed out that video I would highly recommend you to go through that video first and then come back to this video. But let's first understand that how with the help of the level order traversal we can find the solution of this binary tree. So over here if you see when we are discussing the level order traversal of a binary tree you must be knowing that we were using an additional data structure and that is the queue for implementing the level order traversal in the iterative way. And what we were doing over here, we were iterating this binary tree and on each and every level, we were inserting all the nodes of a particular level on our queue data structure. Which means that when we were doing the level order traversal on the first node that is the height zero over here, at that time we were inserting one in our queue. Similarly, when we are doing the level order traversal on height one, at that time we were placing 2 and 3 in our temporary queue. Similarly for level 2 we were placing 4, 5, 6 and for the last level we were placing 7 in our temporary queue. Now there is an important point to be noted that is with the help of this auxiliary queue that we were using during the level order traversal with the help of that auxiliary data structure we can easily solve this left hand side and the right side view of the binary tree. Let me show you how. So if you look carefully the left hand side of a binary tree is nothing but the first element of our queue. Which means that over here 1 is the first element of this queue. So this will be the part of our left hand side traversal. Similarly 2 is the part of the next queue. That is why 2 is the part of this left hand side traversal. Similarly 4 over here and 7 over here which means that on each and every level if we can find out the first element of the queue that will give us the left hand side view of the binary tree. Similarly if we can find out the last element of our queue then we can find out the right hand side view of our binary tree. So over here if you notice carefully 1 is also the last element of our queue that is why 1 is also the right hand side view of our binary tree. Similarly over here 3 is the last element of our queue and that is why 3 is the part of the right hand side view of, of our binary tree. Similarly we have 6 and 7 over here. So I hope you can easily understand that how easily and efficiently 
we can find out the left hand side and the right side view of the binary tree with the help of the auxiliary Q data structure that we are using during the level order traversal of the binary tree. So let's go into the implementation part of finding the left hand side and the right hand side view of the binary tree. So let's start with the implementation. So over here you can see I have created a class called as left and the right view of a binary tree. And over here I have defined the simple node of a binary tree which is actually a class and within this main block I have defined a tree which we have drawn over here. So let's start from here and let's start with the implementation of this left hand side and the right hand side view of the binary tree. So I hope until this point this is clear to you and if not please go through my earlier video so that you can also understand the structure and the way how we represent the binary tree into our code. So let's start with the implementation and for that we will be creating a method called as left and right side view. And over here we will be passing the root node as our parameter. So let's call this function from our main block and pass the root element from here. So we are done with the initial implementation. Let's write the logic over here to do the traversal. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to store the left hand side view and the right hand side view in a particular data structure and for that I will be creating an array list over here. So let's first define the two array list over here. So I think this is clear to you. So over here we have defined two array list for holding the right hand side and the left hand side view of our binary tree. Now let's start with the iteration that is the level order traversal of the binary tree over here and for that we need an auxiliary data structure which is the main component of our level order traversal. So let's define a queue over here and the data type of the element that this queue will be holding inside it will be a type node and that is why I'm defining node as a data type over here. And just like the simple level order traversal we will start with the root element and that is why we will be placing the first node that is the root node into our queue data structure over here. Now let's start with the iteration of this queue until and unless this queue is empty. So let's start with the implementation and meanwhile I will be explaining each and everything over here to you so that it will be damn easy for you to understand and with the help of this solution you can solve any problem regarding the binary tree traversal. So let's implement over here. So here we are checking that whether the queue is empty or not. So for the first time it is not empty because we have placed the root element within our queue and that's why it will enter within the while. So right now if you see if I go back to my presentation over here you can see that we have a queue which have only the first node that is the root node over here. So right now the structure of the queue is also something like this which means that we have only the root element within the queue. Now let's see taking this advantage how we can solve this problem. So the first thing that we will be doing over here we will be first checking the size of this queue. Now why we are checking the size of the queue you will get to know within a few minutes. Let me first take the size of the queue over here. So here you can see I have taken the size of the queue which is obviously one for the first time since we have inserted the root element over here. Now what we have to do according to level order traversal we have to loop through on each and every node of our binary tree of a particular level. So for that what we will be doing I will be looping over all the elements that are present on the queue on a particular level. So let's write a for loop over here. So let's start from i equal to 0 to the size of this queue. Hopefully until this point this is clear to you because until now we were just doing the level order traversal. Now comes the tricky part and the main logic of this algorithm. So what we will be doing over here, we will check that if the value of i equal to equal to 0, which means that this is the first node of our queue, then we will be pushing this node into our left hand side view. But we will be not pushing the root element. What we will be pushing, we will be pushing the current node that is the root node right now. So queue.pull so this will pop up the element from our queue and which will push the first node that is the 0th node on our left hand side view of the binary tree. Similarly if the value of i is equal to equal to size minus 1 then the node that we are having right now is the right hand side view of our binary tree. So right view dot add and within that we will be placing the current element. 
So this is basically the actual logic of finding the left hand side and the right hand side view of the binary tree. Hopefully this is clear to you. Let me write the remaining code of the level order traversal and let me explain you one more time so that it will be clear for you guys. So let's write the rest of the code for the level order traversal. So what we'll do, we'll check that whether there exists any left hand side subtree or not. If there exists any left hand side subtree, then we will be pushing that within our queue. Or else if there is any right hand side subtree, we will be placing the right hand side subtree within the queue. So how this logic is working, it is clearly mentioned on my video where I have explained the level order traversal. So if it is not clear to you, I will highly recommend you to go through that video first and then come back to this solution. So over here, we are pretty much done with our left hand side and the right side view of the binary tree. Let me now print out the solution over here once we are done with this iteration. So over here, our for loop ends, which means we have to print out our solution over here. So let's first print out the left hand side view of the binary tree. Similarly over here, we will be printing the right hand side view. So let's save it and let's run this solution and let's see whether everything is working or not. And after that, I will be explaining you in detail what is going on over here if you have still not understand that what I am doing over here. So let's run this code. So great, we got the solution over here. So let's represent it in a meaningful way so that it will be easy for you to understand. And great, you can see the left hand side view of this binary tree is 1, 2, 4 and 7 and the right hand side view is 1, 3, 6 and 7 as we have done in our previous slide. So let's go back to my previous slide. So over here you can see the left hand side view of this binary tree was 1, 2, 4, 7 which is similar to the 1, 2, 4, 7 over here and the right hand side view is nothing but 1, 3, 6 and 7 which is also same over here. So we are correct with our solution. So let me explain you one more time what we are doing over here so that it will be easy for you to understand this complete solution. So over here what we are doing is simply the level order traversal. So the only special thing that we are doing over here is on each and every iteration which means that on each and every level of a binary tree we are trying to fetch the zeroth element and the last element of the queue which will actually give the left hand side view and the right hand side view of our binary tree. And thereafter over here we are simply inserting the nodes in our queue based on the availability of the left hand side subtree and the right hand side subtree. And at the end over here I am just printing the left hand side and the right hand side view of the binary tree over here. So hopefully this solution was easy for you to understand and hopefully you have found it useful. And if you have found this video useful, do not forget to like and share this video. And if you have any question regarding this video, do let me know in the comment section below. I will be happy to help you over there. And if you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So without wasting much time, see you on our next video where we will be solving another problem statement on the binary tree. See you on our next video. Thank you.